Welcome to Was It Good, the podcast that reviews movies and TV shows. Today we're talking The Creator. I'm Ravi, joined by Arjuna. And our producer, Michael. And we are Was, was it, it Good. Oh yeah. Usually Krishna is here, but unfortunately he decides to run away to Maine. What for, a loser. For the scenery and the trees and the, the drugs. And the wedding Oh, wedding, yeah. My wedding. main man. But is it his own wedding? No, it's not. It would be really awkward if he didn't invite us to his own wedding. Like, I'm, yeah. as, you, as you know, I'm getting married in a few months. What? To who? Is it your, your girlfriend? Uh, my fiance. Oh, your fiance. Sarah. Sarah. And uh, if he didn't, like, should I uninvite him? Would that be like? Would that be grounds? No, you invite I mean, him and then you embarrass him. Yeah, during it. Mm. Yeah, you, I pants him. Like you say, like because you know, like during your wedding, you have to like say a thank you type speech or whatever. You actually, like, you, traditionally, you're not the groom and the bride are not supposed to speak. To so they're wedding. just not supposed to speak at all. No, that's stupid. you're not. That's why you have uh, uh, bridal parties, like to, to speak for you. You're not actually supposed to speak. But that would be the like if you were to give like a thank you speech or whatever. That's where you would yeah. embarrass and be like, and you would do it subtly, being like talking about inviting loved ones and. And how it's important. To, I don't know why we're talking about weddings. Let's get into the creator. Nobody cares about our personal You could have had a nice pivot there. How? Yeah, a wedding is like creating a union between two people. You're like, speaking of weddings, the main character in the creator is married to another character. <laughs> and so we begin with them together. John David Washington's character, Sergeant Joshua Taylor, married to... Jimmy Chan's character. Maya Fay. Who's actually Maya? Fay. Whoa! Maya. Spoiler alert! I mean, this whole thing's gonna be a spoiler. Well, let's just let people know before we. Jump. I would hope they would know when they click in. If this is the first time you're watching this podcast, beware. where have you been? This spoiler is episode two alert for 70 all future eight. episodes. <laughs> actually, we should we should probably start saying like spoilers. We used to. Yeah, we did when we used to write your intro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you guys stopped. It's true. Krishna was the one actually that said he wanted to stop for some. I don't know. No, why. no. You said you wanted to start ad libbing it. Oh, and I haven't been. I've just been doing the same thing. Now you have, we have like a formula. So yeah. now just add into the formula, like spoilers for blah 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 blah. Yeah, recalculate your formula. Yeah. There we go. Recalculating the, like an AI would. Like an AI would. Why would I bring up AI? Because we're talking the creator. Because yeah. this pod is sponsored by. AI, ChatGPT, AI, the place where you should donate your face to give AI your likeness. We love AI here. AI, don't hurt us. the thing that reads the robots of the disguise in time, written by AI. Before we do our usual formula of one-word impressions, chapter listings, bold predictions, blah blah blah. I do want to talk about. We don't have bold predictions. I know we don't have bold predictions, but we we might. I do want to talk about one major uh, aspect of this film, the creator, that was kind of brought up over and over again, was that whole idea of giving your likeness to AI. So in the film, AI has been around, it seems like, for decades, right? Starting in this world's history, probably like, I believe, the 50s or the 60s. And, you know, this film takes place at when? 20 2070. 2070? Yeah, 2070 is when the most... So of- at that point, AI probably had been around, yeah, for roughly 100 years. And, you know, in the kind of history lesson that we get in the intro of the film, there is this discussion of have your face scanned and then um, an AI bot can have, like, fake skin or whatever. Mm-hmm. I bring it up because I've been served a, or There's been a, an interesting movement with influencers right now where a lot of them are being approached by tech companies to have their faces, their likeness scanned in order for an AI um, avatar of themselves, lifelike digital avatar to be created to make content on their behalf. So, you know, the world of TikTok and YouTube is being filled with, like, reactionary type content mostly, where it's someone giving a very dull mind, like, no, nothing kind of, like, response to another video whatever. And these companies are basically saying to these big influencers, you could just automate that process. Um, which is fascinating because it's this idea that what's happening in the real world we're, we've kind of seen in like this movie and everything. Yeah. So I want to I want to ask you guys this question: Should we give one of these tech companies all of Was It Good's video library to scan all of our likeness <laughs> well, and just create these pods here's, automated? Here's something. Here's a question I have to your question. Sure. 
have we read the fine print on YouTube's policies for the video creation? Video. Oh, uploading. in terms of can you upload an AI type well, no, avatar? Like, like, or? Well, we upload these video podcasts right. to YouTube, mm-hmm. right? There's not, like... Are oh, we already did, donating? Uh, yeah, are we all, do, oh, I see what you mean. Are, yeah. Is our likeness already sure. out there in public domain, essentially? So, that it could be used. So, is AI Michael out there right now producing AI Was It Good? I mean, so isn't that what possible. this is? I mean, damn it. We've become self-aware. <laughs> well, they, they say this world's a simulation, too, right? So that's fair. Floating brains. Um, is it Kurtzgeist? Is the science channel that's a fun, like, little 2D animation? Mm-hmm. They actually posted a video... Uh, about the idea of we living in a dead universe and we're just a bunch of floating brains um, just floating around imagining everything that we're seeing or wh- and whatnot. Each individual brain is kind of its own universe, essentially, because you're creating the world around you. Damn. Then we're boring. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Crazy shit happens all the time. That's true. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's true, like just the, not the, to me. <laughs> <laughs> just the just the world that you've created around you. Yeah. Yeah. Like why do I work a job? Yeah, why aren't <laughs> I just like a billionaire? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's confines to it. Maybe you are, and this is your fantasy. Oh wow, that that's really weird. It's fucked up. It is fucked up. Yeah. Okay. Really, let's get, let's let's get into one word impressions. Um, before we start, we will give Krishna, who's not here, a chance to to give his one word impression because he sent it to us uh, via electronic mail. My one word impression Play. for the creator is unexpected because for me, it was unexpectedly more emotional than uh, I thought it was going to be. Uh, we knew there was going to be some heavy stuff from the trailer, so like... It wasn't that shocking. That being said, going into the film, I thought there would be a more of a focus on the sci-fi elements with the AI and the simulants uh, and all that jazz. Um, but really, the focus of this film um, was on the ideas of what makes us human. Uh, at what point do we look at something or, or someone else that's different from us and we find common ground? Uh, explore the ideas of what is programming. I mean, the humans in this film acted more heartlessly than the AI, right? Uh, and, and that was definitely on purpose. Um, so exploring those ideas of programming and stuff. Uh, and there was more than one moment where I, you know, was moved. And that surprised me. I didn't expect to be uh, that moved by this movie. I really did expect it to be more of a, like sci-fi popcorn action movie. Um, that being said, I, th- I thought the emotional aspect of it really strengthened the movie or that focus really served the movie well. Uh, uh, and, and sort of the sci-fi stuff, the AI was like the backdrop to answering those questions. Um, and the backdrop itself was actually like my favorite element of the film. Um, I loved sort of the world building uh, and the look and the feel of the robots, the simulants and humans all coexisting uh, in this uh, this culturally Asian setting, right? Uh, I thought they did a really good job of uh, getting that look and feel uh, consistent um, throughout the movie. Uh, so, yeah, I really enjoyed that part, I think, the most. Um, um. <laughs> He ended it with um. <laughs> he ended it with um. Um. I thought it was a one-word impression. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys make fun of me for having. I mean, I mean, because yeah, because obviously I, I I got that clip before and I played it, and, you know, and what and whatnot. Yeah, it's a three three and a half almost three and a half minute like clip. That makes sense. We do, we do go on like our one-word impression is our way of like what are what is our impression of the movie? Yeah, like initial so. thought of yeah, the film. Exactly. Is what the whole purpose of the one word impression. Yeah. It should be called a one word thesis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean for some people, yes. I I mean I'm going to go next and I'll I'll keep this nice and short. Uh for my one word impression, I'm I'm going to go with the obvious, which is creative. Te- I was going to say technology. Oh, I thought obvious. I was going to go with technology. <laughs> technology because obviously the film, the the main setting of it is about AI, about tech. 
And then obvious, and the other reason is also just kind of ha- uh, to talk about how the film was actually made. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, major props to to Gareth Edwards. He, you know, wanted to do this big epic sci-fi tale with grand scale, but you know, these studios were basically essentially quoting him roughly like two hundred, three hundred million for this, and he was able to do it for eighty, eighty million. And part of the reason is because tech has come di- like the price of technology has come down so much. He used um, essentially prosumer level camcorders, cameras that like you and I, um, you know, if we're crazy and don't want to spend money on like actual things like food could essentially afford. Um, The camera that he used was the FX30 for quite a bit of the film. Three. FX3. Yeah, FX3, sorry. The FX3, which is a $4,000 camera. And like, you know, obviously that is still very expensive. I'm not saying that everyone can afford that, but in terms of comparison to like a traditional IMAX camera, which is something like a hundred thousand dollars, like that camera shoots IMAX spec. That's why the, you know, when we did our little FAQ on it, we had said, definitely go see this film on IMAX because it was shot for IMAX, but good IMAX. Yeah. The, the theater that we saw AMC Burbank 16, I will shame them. It was slightly off the projection. So Arjuna almost had another migraine. Incident, yeah, so. uh, we, we we at least we figured out that's what causes intense migraines for me. Yeah, not Gemma Chan. Oh, <laughs> oh shoot! Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, I'm just shoot. saying because the only other thing. So yeah, back I didn't surf, realize that. But for for, for people that aren't aware, so Arjuna went to go see Eternals, and he got probably the worst migraine I've ever witnessed you having. Yeah, um, to the point where like we were gonna go get dinner, he couldn't sit and eat. He had to like I had to drive him. Back to my place, and he's what two, three times, twice. twice. We had to pull over so he could throw up. And the only thing in that film and this film that's the same is Jimmy Chan is in both films. So I was just wondering, like, is there like, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> this is not I have nothing against Jimmy Chan. I think no, she is a, a she's wonderful a great actress. actress, great person, seems like a great person, great on the eyes. Oops. <laughs> 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 Hey, I'm just no, 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 no. Never mind. I was gonna compare us to those other weird, terrible podcasts and like how, yeah. how, why do they get so many good views and everything? It's because they're assholes. Oh, we're not assholes. We saw one of them at the showing. Yeah, we did. Um, I forget his name. Are we, gonna... I do, but I don't know if I want to drop. No, we're not it. gonna say. Yeah. It. No, don't give and his it, name don't give is Krishna people. Ram Gopal. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> he wasn't there. Though there was, um, there was a few. I mean, Krishna has a distinct look. No, he, it's not a distinct look. It's a common look because I constantly feel like I see him because he's got the bald beard look. Yeah. And that's a very common look. Do you remember in Mexico? Yeah. We both, we both yeah, thought. Yeah, we saw someone and we were like, oh, it's Christian. It's like, no, it's, <laughs> it's a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we pointed him out to Christian and Christian was... Probably a little offended. He was super offended. <laughs> he was like, it, was, uh, it was him. But uh, no, I think both yours and Krishna's one word impressions were were interesting. Like really focusing on the the kind of classic sci fi elements of this movie. That I think, um, like when you boil the movie down, right, mm-hmm. is I think some of the strongest parts of it uh, yeah. in general. And it kind of leads into my one word impression because I'm going to use the word Elysium. Uh, this is something our producer Michael also mentioned. Uh, but I felt it too, like coming out of that movie, it was like, this movie reminds me a lot of the Matt Damon sci-fi movie, uh, Elysium. Elysium. And what does Elysium mean? Do you know? Heaven. Yeah. Which heaven. is interesting oh. because heaven is a, I don't know if, it, look it up, but that's basically <laughs> what it, I yeah, I remember it meaning. I think so. I think, I which think is so, a, yeah. a big, I don't know if theme or like, but you know, that's kind of the emotional crux of the show yeah so uh, i mean um, alfie alfie and uh yeah. joshua have a whole uh, multiple conversations about heaven right where right josh was like you have to be a good person to go and then alfie's like well i guess neither of us are going because you know i'm not, I'm a, person. not a person and you're right. not good um and then josh was like don't worry i am going to heaven uh, and then at the end and then maybe he does but maybe he doesn't well i think it it speaks to the arbitrary nature of what is good and what is a person yeah and how they're both sort of bent on perception yeah I, I think christian mentioned this in his one word impression too with programming and how mm-hmm. many of the the simulants and and stuff showed more inherent goodness than a lot of the the human characters like alice and janney's character 
uh, what was her name? Uh, Colonel Howell. Yeah, she was just, was just she like, was vicious. Yeah, yeah, she was just but like. But she had reason to be. Yeah. I she mean, did maybe. Have, she had some reason. It depends that. on your morals, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, it depends yeah. on your perspective, too, right? And I thought, like, the movie could have had maybe one more thing to maybe add a little bit more perspective. For because her. for her character, yeah. there's the one conversation she has with Joshua early in the movie, which, you know, Allison Janney is a, a really great actress. I mm-hmm. think she does a good job of kind of portraying the emotion there. But it just felt like we were missing something. Yeah, it, it feels like she, they had that conversation and... and you know, the conversation was essentially, I had two sons. They both joined up in this war. They're both dead. One of my sons was lured, like, lured out by, like, a, st- a simulant and then brutally tortured and murdered. Right. And then she goes on this, like, insane rampage, essentially, of, like, being insanely brutal to uh, the AI robots and just, yeah. yeah. And like Lerman said, it's all perspective, right? That's her perspective on it. But then even the simulants near the end are like, yeah, we didn't blow up Los Angeles. It was a coding and programming yeah. error that the United States... So they say. Right. That's the perspective, right? That's what they're saying. But I, I at least at least me as a viewer, I, from everything I've seen in the movie... And what is I a program? Tend well, to, real, quick, real quick, though, I, I will yeah. say why I find... And this is just my opinion. This is not the opinion of the podcast. I'm just putting this out there. So if you want to, like, throw hate at me, that's fine. I can take it. But the reason that line to me is believable is because it's, you know... I feel like it's poking fun at like our the military. Yeah, it, yeah. which like seems, I, like we have seen believable. the United States military do heinous or, and fucked or up not things. even that right. Like, what do countries do to justify their actions? Their mistakes, or not even right their mistakes. Their well, mistakes, we're not yeah. gonna we're not gonna take that. We can just blame it blame on, it on somebody else. Yes, this. yes. But it, I mean, it also speaks to you know the whole thing. It's just programming. It's just programming, yeah. and it's like what we made that programming. Yeah. And we share the responsibility, same as they do, but same as with Alice and Janney's character, right? Like, just programming, and is that a programming error, what she's right. doing? And what is a programming error in right. regards to AI? Is that just mean that, like, some rogue AI process, which would be like a rogue terrorist or whatever, did it? And is that any less to blame than whatever? Right, and but even even with, like, Howell's character, right? Like, she puts all the blame on the simulants and the robots, but, like... You could say it's her fault that her children joined oh, the military. Oh, yeah. for wow. sure. Really. Blame the mom. So, yeah. But, no, but, well, well, but, but you know what I mean? Like, it's there's so many factors into a lot layers. of this stuff and layers. Well, so. and I, I think I also wonder, is her story true? Because right. she seems to believe it in the moment. If you watch it, she's emotional over it. But one of her colleagues looks over at her weird. Yeah, when and she's giving that story, he did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also everything we see about AI. Do you believe that they would have done something that brutal to a human being right. based on everything else we see, and them even saying in the end, "We can't." Well, they they couldn't hurt Niamata, but they. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. No, I think they could because remember, there's also yeah they were killing people. They were definitely killing people. Like the police units were also kind of. I mean, they were programmed like real police, so go in, just shoot, don't ask questions. So I think they are capable of doing it. I also think it's one of those things where just like human beings, where there's the scaling factor. Not yeah. all humans are brutal. Some humans are brutal. I mean, that's why we have serial killers and fucked up human beings. I think that's it's true. the same with AI and robots. And again, that all comes down to programming, comes down to yeah. upbringing, you know, social situations and, and all that stuff. I mean, what if we blamed an entire group for a few people's actions or beliefs? We'd be assholes. Yeah, that would be terrible. Yeah. Went to <coughs> war and annihilated them. <laughs> it's only happened a few times. Wait, are you talking about like us three specific? Or no, like human beings? Human beings. Like, no, I think he's oh. talking about human beings. Gotcha, and, like, gotcha. Yeah, the United no- States <laughs> yes. and recent wars of the last 20 right. to 30 years. Well, 100 years. Who also says it? What was it? All time. All, yeah, all time. <laughs> Every single war pretty much that's ever been well, waged. Cur- Colonel Howell also says it when they're talking to um, Joshua at the pool um, about Neanderthals. And human beings. Oh yeah, which is really fascinating yeah. to you look into, like that. Neanderthals and all of that. Like, there's a book that talks about how Homo sapiens were like one of six possible species, species. and like she says, we raped and murdered them out of existence. Yay, humanity! And <laughs> we're so that great. legacy. That's our ancestors. So our, our our ancestors did that, and now we're here talking about movies that question that and. 
AI. Wow. So I would say we have become better. And we are. Was, was it, it good? good? <laughs> All right, let's get in. Let's get into everyone's favorite subject: Arjuna's DVD chapter listing. Now, unfortunately, Christian's not here, so he can't read it. Someone has to do a Christian impression. So um, Michael's going to have to read it. Okay. Michael's Doing his best impression of Christian. Correct. There you go. Okay. Who are you? All right. No, no pressure. It's gonna be. Easy. And boom goes the L.A. Oh, Ani, I'm Preggers. Hello to clean hero to cleaner. Let me watch my TV. Infiltrate the dealer. Find the supplies. A robot and his daddy. Ice cream is really dangerous for you. The ring of capture. Hiding in plain sight. Evil humans. A boom and boom goes the general. Oh, my God, they killed Claire. Traffic in L.A. doesn't exist anymore. Planes, they're still the same, except they go to space now. Sun shining that station. Alive again to die again. All right, I don't, I, I don't know. That was pretty good. That was pretty, pretty good. That was pretty good I'm going to give that a, a 6.3 uh, out, out of 10, 10. Out oh, 10 for impression. Honestly, that's probably and, generous. And in terms of the, the, the actual, um, my original was going to be a 5.62, mm. but I'm going to raise that to a 7.13. Oh. I, you love this. <laughs> specific. I yeah. do. It's but only, only because of, and boom goes to general. <laughs> <laughs> they did that thing. Tw- they did it twice, where twice like the thing be, hit yeah. the back of a soldier, yeah. and then like get it off, get it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was gory as fuck. I was like, are they gonna do it one more time? Like rule of three here? Oh, I'm but it, to, I I'm even love to... that. Like the, the 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 they stop it for a second, and yeah. then they're like, I I, I, I was actually in the in that moment when we were like watching that. My brain immediately went to like because I I believe at least as far as I'm aware, I've not died. But I've always thought that drowning is the worst way to go. Mm. But then when watching that, I'm like, or is that the worst way to go? I feel like burning is the worst way to go. God damn. Because you're just like, eh, you know what? No way Burn- it seems like yeah, it's no great way, to go. No way that's harmful and painful feels like a good way to go. Burning slowly would probably be one of the worst ways to go. Worse than drowning, though? Well, drowning, you just feel the panic and the water. In burning, your skin melts, and then you breathe it in, and your insides melt. Okay, maybe fire is worse. Emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry about That's that. That's that you would do that. Yeah, you would. Oh, okay. Until you fruit roll up to your lungs. Oh, oh my God. I just frayed. Let's move into something more happy here. Um, <laughs> yes, the creator. The creator. Here, here's actually a, a good one. You know, um, at the taping of this podcast, the writer strike has come to an end. Huzzah! Congratulations, um, writers! The Screen Actors Guild is still um, within their, or still doing their um, negotiation. Negotiation. Going back to the table on Monday, October second. Right. So as of right now, like you know, TV film is still on hold. Right. Yes. Uh, late night shows are back. Drew Barrymore is so happy, and uh, <laughs> Bill Maher. <laughs> Fucking assholes. Um, but I, br- I bring this up because it's interesting with this film coming out during this the strike period. This is kind of considered, you know, mid-tier film in terms of uh, budget. Number one makes it kind of a mid-tier film. Uh, but also, you know, it did not, because of the strike and everything, you know, it did not get the publicity that sure. it probably usually would have gotten. But where do you feel like this film kind of lands in, your overall view of films of like 2023 and, and, and where Hollywood is now, where it is big block. Yeah. Big I, I hope it's a turning point. Right. Cause like the middle class of films have really disappeared. Right. Like you don't get these like 80 to a hundred million dollar movies as much anymore because everything is a 200, $250 million franchise type of movie, or it is a really small budget mm-hmm. type of like Oscar Beatty type of film or, or something, right? And and the eighty to hundred million dollar stuff is going to streaming, right? And right. it's like we can make this a six or an eight episode series that we can kind of elongate and it's high quality on your streaming service. So I kind of hope this film is a return to some of that stuff coming back to the theater because I think like I don't think this movie is perfect. 
by any means. But I do think this is an enjoyable movie that you can go to and you can have fun and you can enjoy it. Uh, and it's it's a it's a it's something that's special to see on screen mm-hmm. versus watching this at home, right? Mm-hmm. Like, can you imagine if you watch the creator for the first time at home? Yeah, versus watching it yeah. maybe on a bigger screen. I think it is. I think it is elevated by having that bigger format that I think most people obviously don't have access to. Obviously, there are the few who have theaters at home. So right. No, of course. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, right off, you know, the start of the spot and 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 how we've said you need to see this film is on is is IMAX is because the film was shot with the intent of seeing it on a bigger screen. Yeah. Because of like the scale that they wanted yeah. to portray. Um, and again, like I think it's it's fascinating. It's a massive win for what it cost and what we got. Like initially, I left the theater, and I remember thinking, "Oh, may, it wasn't what I wanted it to be." Mm-hmm. And that's because I do this thing specifically. I'm realizing with Gareth Edwards, where mm-hmm. I overhype his movies. It's the three that come to mind: Godzilla. I overhype that one. The 2000, was it 14, I think? or Sounds about right. Like around that period. And then Rogue One overhyped that to to no end. And then even, you know, yeah, the creator, I hyped that as well. And I think what's different is, like, I'm realizing my overhype, it'll never live up to, like, what you actually get because you're creating expectations that are just out of this world, right? Yeah. But with this film, when, like, sitting back down and, like, just kind of thinking about it, I also didn't do the usual thing of watch a ton of, like, videos of other people giving their opinion. I just kind of sat with my own thoughts on it. And then I happened to just see the trailer for the creator again. And then it all kind of came back to me fresh where I was like, yeah, this scale of the film was really, really good. It's very, very visually beautiful. And like the story is one where you sit and yeah, you think about it. Yeah. It's not, you know, one of those films where it's like, cool. Like Christian had said in his one word impression, a popcorn action movie. If it was a popcorn action movie, I don't think you would, think about it as much you would just be like oh cool pew 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 pew, and then it's done like like avatar avatar is a big popcorn pew 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 pew, pew, and then it's done it's more like a swish 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 (laughs) yeah water (laughs) splash splash and drowning (laughs) and whales and whales yeah i mean uh, what i what i do like about this movie is is it's it's original ip right this is an original story it is something that like we do not get as often in the theaters anymore because Studios are all in on franchises, sequels, right. remakes, uh, and everything right now. So it's you know part of part of me like softens my stance on a movie like this because it's like I want this movie to succeed so we right. can get more of this. Right? Do we know how much is made so far? Uh, I believe the pro- a projection for opening weekend domestically was sixteen to nineteen million. Is that where we're at now? A piece of art is only as good as it's the money it yes. makes. Thousand percent. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. no. I meant. With us. Oh, uh, no, no, us. no, no, no. I, I think the reason Ravi asks is because this is what the studio bases all of their decisions off of. And so if the movie is not financially successful, we do not get more of these, unfortunately. So that's the yeah. that's the concern, right? So now it's like, I do have to go spend money so the movie can hopefully be successful and and we can get more stuff like this. I mean, the, uh, the nice thing is that so we, we got the AMC does like an early access thing. Um, so we got to see it, what, Wednesday as opposed mm-hmm. to, like, the Thursday. And the nice thing is, like, that theater was packed. Like, almost, I think, every single seat there were, filled. you yeah. know, seats and, you know, butts and seats. Not seats and butts. That seats be- in butts. <laughs> yeah, there might have been some seats and some butts. <laughs> my seat was in my butt, I'll tell you that. Wow. You know, did, real quick, though, did uh, anyone else, like, feel like the asshole sitting behind them kept, like, kicking their chair? Always. No, but I did hear a couple of times somebody behind you was, like, prepared for the movie and like they seem to have brought a backpack full of crinkly snacks oh yeah yeah there was somebody there doing that they felt like my worst eating. still is avatar way of water where i just had a kid kicking my chair for three hours Ooh. i still can't believe That's you the didn't 4D like, experience. Just say, yeah i can't that believe was the you say anything to the fucking parents oh so heard it oh did they stop though or no uh, for briefly and then started again and then there was just a kid. And then there was a kid two rows in front that like the parents didn't do anything and the kid was just wandering at like different parts just walking. Yeah. Around. I had a movie. I don't know which one it was. It wasn't one I cared too much about, but yeah, the kids like had toys out and were like snacks uh, strewn about the like, floor. This isn't your like, living room. Like 
It Back is. in my day, <laughs> kids are a bane on humanity. But see, but you know what's interesting? That does tie into this conversation about movies and these these types of epics yeah. and seeing it on the big screen. Is I I do wonder how many like good films I've missed because there is like a weird anxiety of like going to a movie theater and having to deal with people. Like just yeah. people suck. And we like, live in like, a large city, when, so yeah, it's, when it's when I saw, in a society. Like, when, I, when I saw that the theater was packed, I was like, oh, is this going to be, like, a shitty experience? Or, like, these people are actually going to be, like, respectful of the film and, like, you know, keep to yourself and shut the fuck up. And thankfully, like, our theater experience, I think, was really good. Like, yeah. we did not have anyone that was, uh, you know, a problem or say anything or whatever. So, like, props to everyone that showed up. But, again... There, I'm sure I'm not the only person that's like, oh, I don't want to deal with the experience of a full movie theater because people suck, right. and that's going to obviously hurt and affect you know these films and and um, the potential of getting more or whatever. Yeah, and and the spectacle film, like yeah. if if the theater dies, I'm curious how that changes how we shoot and view movies like this. Well, it, de- it depends. If you talk to a company like Apple. Like when they showed their pro headset. Oh thing, yeah, the Vision Pro could the save. Vision Pro could save the movie experience in the sense that, hey, uh, I message you guys. Hey, the creators out digitally. You guys want to watch it? Everyone throws their headsets on. There's a digital you. There's a digital you, and it's just us in this massive theater, and you still get the theater ex- experience because of this big fucking screen in your face and. But you're you you're probably gonna have a lot of migraines. I don't think you could ever wear the Vision Pro. <laughs> Oh, that's sad. I'm going to miss you at the movies, RJ. <laughs> I'll just go to the real movie theater, yeah. and I'll bring your, <laughs> your <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> like, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. My friends are sitting here. Sir, bets a phone. That's my friend. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do my friend, you asshole. We'll make blow-up dolls of ourselves. There you go. <laughs> Introducing the eye doll. <laughs> but, but it, but it, it is interesting, though, like, you know, Facebook or Meta is really big on this augmented thing. Apple's obviously going all in with their Vision Pro. And the fact that, like, a lot of people have said with the Vision Pro coming, if it is what everyone is expecting it to be, it's not good. The Vision Pro, the first initial one that comes out at 3500 is not for every single person. It is expensive as fuck. Um, it is not priced for everybody. But that being said, the price of it, as time goes on, will drop down. And more and more... I do think we are getting into like the augmented world now and, yeah. and like Meta is doing their their meta glasses that like look like regular glasses that are doing so, shit. Oh, on, those Ray Bands. Yeah, the Ray Bands and everything. Yeah. So I it's I think we're getting to that place now where Yeah, the movie theater might be dead soon. Sooner than you think. Yeah, or augmented. Or heavily augmented, which could make the movie experience worse. Pay nineteen ninety nine to not see ads during the movie. I could see that being a thing. Also, think about it. Like, I, I think about it in the, even the sports realm too, because you have a limited amount of seats, right, mm-hmm. in a sports stadium, right? And mm-hmm. the obviously your closer ones, you tear off, and you're like, "Hey, pay ten thousand dollars for a courtside seat," but that's one seat. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden, you could be like, "Hey, pay five thousand dollars for like access on your Vision Pro to the courtside seat," but I can sell that as many times as I want. So NBA teamed up with Meta yeah. already with their Oculus headsets, and they did a select number of games last NBA season where you were courtside all around and mm-hmm. you could move wherever you wanted to. And they did it in the Meta Horizon app. Mm-hmm. So you were basically, when you're in it, you're in your VR headset and you're watching courtside and then you're with other people. So there's yeah. also like you watching and then interacting with strangers around this game or whatever. And they've done it for concerts as well. It's not the best quality by any means, but again, as it gets better, as it gets better and better and better, it's like, well, okay, I'll just put my headset on to watch. When whatever. will the headsets take over? I, I think within the next five years, it's going to start becoming more of a norm. And by norm, I mean, I think you're going to start seeing like if, if like, for example, like you and Sahara or you're a couple, right? I don't think necessarily you're each going to have your own headset, but I could see like your family unit has a what at least one or two headsets. Right. That I could definitely see as like the norm within five years. Interesting. Now our parents, I don't know if they will ever adapt to it. I don't think they will. 
I think they and and I think that's where like you know that technology line and mm-hmm. that age group and everything. I think the headset will be the piece. That'll uh, be that us one day. That we'll, I mean, we'll, hopefully, we'll pass the line. I'm at practicing. Some point. You're practicing with headset. Yeah. I mean, the, the the individuals that wear sunglasses all the time, they've been practicing for life. Bono, <laughs> Bono's the original test case. Bono's been in augmented reality since since he was born in the nineties. Apparently, That's why he, was born he thinks with he's so good at music. Hey, he just opened up at the Sphere, so somebody thinks he's still good at music. You yeah, remember when uh, you do. two, like, everyone's Apple? Oh, yeah. Uh, iTunes, yeah, yeah. Like where you were everyone forced. was d- downloaded an album, and everyone hated you two after that? Yeah. That was a PR nightmare for them. It wasn't great. Fun times. Man, what a feeling to be like, hey, everybody, here's this stuff for free, and everybody hates it. Speaking of things that people hate, sequels. <laughs> Gareth Edwards. Gareth Edwards was recently asked when talking about the creator, you know, what are your plans for a sequel? And Arjuna, you, you said he basically said... He's like, I like endings. I have no plans to make a sequel. It's not happening. Which I respect a lot. Yeah, same. I don't think this film needs a sequel, and no. I don't want a sequel. No. I, I would say, and, and maybe, you know, you know, you could laugh at this or whatever, but I would appreciate a prequel. I wouldn't mind, like, because the world that they built, and especially, like, the thing I, I really enjoy about the film is the opening, where it gives us, like, film role about the history of this world. And I would, it would be fascinating, like, I don't want to give this idea, because I feel like if a studio exec heard this, they would make this. But, like, like a like an anthology series of like when the first AI in this world is like presented and like go through like the decades like kind of like a for all mankind or love death and robot or love death and robot oh, that would be yeah but like something like that I think would be kind of cool um, yeah but again I don't want to I don't want them to hear me so. yeah I was gonna say I don't know if a prequel but like I would love to see more in the universe maybe a video game would be cool video game would be sick see we gotta we gotta break this habit. What? Got to break this habit of trying to franchise stuff. I mean, I'm not saying a franchise. I want a franchise. Well, that is franchise. As soon as you make a, a second thing, it's right. a franchise. It's a franchise. Yeah, but what do you do? The world is great. Well, just use that creativity and make it even more different, compelling new world. But but then it's a different thing, and it's not That's as fine. cool we don't, because it's we don't not need it. what I want. We don't need it, Michael. This is interesting. This is We're the divided. studios talking to so you what you're and saying, saying is everything must have a sequel, prequel, no, 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 spin-off, no, no. video game tie-in. No, you're telling me that if something good can't continue to have life because everything has to be completely unique, I'm and not that's saying that getting harder and uh, more impossible. I'm, well, I'm saying because that's so now I that's can't the way make we've a been futuristic pro- robot. That's the movie? way we've been programmed, Michael. Nope. <laughs> they pro the studios have programmed us to think that the best things need that, and then we're assigning everything, almost everything, right? Everything that sure. is good and successful must have something. So that what continues. if what if I take all the visual style of this and just say it's a different place, <laughs> would I be called a copycat? Yes. So why can't I just then... S- it? But if I'm like, oh, no, it's the same universe, then I'm a, a genius. No, it's lazy. So, okay, well... well wait, so you're saying Star Wars is lazy, that they should have stopped yeah. at A New Hope. Oh, my it, God. I mean, yes, it, it did get lazy. So yeah. lazy. If of they, course it did. They should have stopped at A New Hope. You're right. Yeah, I mean, we shouldn't have gotten Ahsoka. You? We shouldn't have gotten any of those video games or any of the. I'm sequels. just saying we we need more original stuff, and I think as as soon as as an original thing happens, and when the director says there's no sequel or anything, and then the studio's like, no, actually, let's do X, Y, and Z. This is where stuff gets Matrix lazy. Four. Oh, oh, Squid Matrix Games. Four. I did not like. No, no, I'm saying yeah. that was made because they were forced to, and they yeah. even wrote it into the movie. Yeah. Like, we're gonna make this yeah. whether you join us yeah, or not. Right, right. But right. I think it's. Similar to early Joshua, early film Joshua attitude towards AI to say that no sequel should be made. I'm not saying no sequel should be made. I'm just saying we got to break the habit of every of everything looking at everything. Everything that's deemed successful, successful. needs a sequel. Yeah, yes. and as soon as yes. Gareth Edwards, the creator of this, the writer of this, the director of this, said there is no sequel, let's lay it to bed. Mm-hmm. No, f- and that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Who's who's the creator of the Watchmen series that came out? Damon Lindelof. So he said to uh, HBO, I don't want to do yeah, a sequel. Yeah, they were very desperate and of like, please do a second season. And he season. said no, and they and stuck then they, to And it. then they respected him and yeah. said, okay, we won't do so it. So that's, I mean, so it's not that studios are, in, you know, what they get, they always get, thankfully. But 
in this particular case, I feel like we won't get a sequel, which no, would be good. I don't think there's a sequel to be had here no, anyway. No, yeah. No. no, I agree. But I did realize I need to buy merch for it because I like it. So. You what should have gotten the there? free poster. I know. I, I'm a little bummed that I didn't, so I might take yours. You can't? Please? Uh, $30. Deal. Plus tax. Okay. On what state tax are you using? California? So is that ten percent? <laughs> fucking taxes <laughs> and it's compound interest. Oh my god, we pay all these taxes and our roads are shit. Police are shit. I'm just now depressed. God damn it! Thanks. What's Archie. wrong? What what kind of road? It, this sounds like you had a road experience. I mean, I've just been driving around recently, and then I'm looking out the window right now, and it's raining, and I'm like, the roads are just gonna get fucking worse. And it's well, like, sp- great. Well, speaking of roads, one thing I did want to bring up, and you mentioned this a little bit, talking about seeing the like early film within the movie. Mm-hmm. And one thing we all talked about after the movie was kind of the the interesting blend of sci fi here, right? Like not everything was just super futuristic. Right. They had telephone lines, they used radio. Um there was there were a couple other things too that weren't like what I think the typical view of futuristic right. is kind of so I, which I thought was cream. interesting. Well, explosive ice cream, as we've uh well, Stop. for some people, ice cream is explosive in the, <laughs> the diarrhea. Yeah, sense. and sometimes it kills you, like in the movie. In the movie, yeah. <laughs> well, no, they just turned her off. No, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that was oh. the bomb that killed her. Yeah, probably because the ice cream is the bomb. Well, the I, guess, bomb. I guess we know ice cream's not cold enough to stop a bomb. That's yeah, yeah that's, that's fair. fair. Dippin' dots, too bad. Dippin' dots could have, because they're 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 uh, cooled in uh, nitrogen. It's true. I so. love Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots are great. Yeah. You want to get Dippin' Dots? <laughs> I go. do. But yeah, what was like some of like what were there, are there other things? Uh, well, are I there other the, things I'm missing? Michael, you pointed out the wireless technology. Like there was no wireless. Like there were no like cell phones. Right. Yeah. There was no wireless device. Hard lines. Hard, hard telephone lines. lines yeah. which it was seemed like the the child's ability to manipulate wirelessly was. Novel and new yeah. idea. Mm. So it's interesting. I'm curious if they purposely thought, well, if we develop AI, would we not develop some of these other techs? Right. Almost maybe even as a safety measure, right? Like, why develop wireless if we don't need to? Because they don't really... Maybe I'm misremembering and you guys remember it dif- or remember something that I'm not, but they don't really establish when they create the simulants in this world, like how long they were around before the yeah. the bomb in LA goes off and you know then Well the they did. Yes. The bomb went off fifteen years ago. They were they made a big no, deal. No, right, no, not not the bomb part, but when the they actually the simulants were like first created. Yeah, we don't have an exact date world. or like, like well, okay. how long I think were the they video around? tells us it was, you know, sixties. Six I mean sixties is when like I think the initial idea of robots and get a robot, but then the idea of AI that piece, I think, if I had to guess, was like 80, 90s is what I right. would guess. The video, I thought the video went over it. They were like, the video was talking about AI and robotics. Right, but there's no specific decade. Yeah. So I it mean, was, I think it was first, it was first, like, get every family needs a robot at home to, like, do work. And they show us clips in black and white. Then it's like that 80s, 90s grain color. Right. And then there's, like, factories producing robots. And then we're in the 2000s. Um, because it's more high def looking. So we're in the two thousands, and then it's like donate your face to give a robot a face. Which weird marketing. It, so wait, is that what you're saying? Is you don't know when the face stuff started? No, no, or? no. AI specifically. I mean, I, I guess I'd have to rewatch, but I, 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 t- I thought that those the earliest stuff was, was already AI. AI, like a version of mm-hmm. AI, and it just continued to So our, di- our diversion point is essentially the 60s. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, what yeah. we can... But you know what? It's interesting, yes. though. Like, you say, like, your take on when you see the robots in the yard and your, your, your thought was, oh, that is AI already. It's interesting, like, you say it that way and I view it a different way, and I'm sure you view it a different way. But that... that that conversation is happening right now, really, in terms of like what is AI yeah. mm-hmm. and like is everything being classified as AI? Like, like is Chat GBT true AI? And the answer is no. It's just a big ass complicated program that can go here, here really quick and scrape information. Like it's a glorified search engine to a degree. It's not true AI, but like from a marketing standpoint, how people are kind of like yeah, selling it's, it's it. It's a hot t- AI is a hot term right now. It's bigger than uh, NFTs. And every every commercial. <laughs> the only time I really see commercials is when I watch football on Sunday. And I would say like, you watch football? 
Yeah, I do actually. On Sundays? On Sunday. Holy shit. But like I would you say You gotta watch the Tay Tay game? <laughs> I would say fifty to sixty percent of commercials yeah. utilize like some, AI, some kind like of the AI word messaging. AI, yeah, like, yeah, big time. Like it, whether it's just like a company being like, "We've been using AI technology for the last fifteen years to develop the sharpest blades for Gillette." What? <laughs> I didn't know AI <laughs> needed to shape, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like every marketing team is just yeah. like AI. put AI in the commercials. But, okay, real quick, I made the j- I made the joke about Tay Tay. On Sunday's game, because sure. this Sunday is going to be the uh, Chiefs versus the Jets and Meadowlands and uh, can, can, or Kansas. Um, <laughs> Travis Kelsey is supposedly dating Taylor Swift. But like from a marketing standpoint, every I don't know if you've been on social media, but every single big brand, sports, not sports, weird shit, everybody has jumped on the Taylor Swift like bandwagon, of course. which makes me think Taylor Swift doesn't exist and she's AI. I mean, let's, that would be pretty intricate because, you know, she is a, an artist and has had concerts where, you know, in theory, she has appeared in person. But what if it's like a, like, like a Mission Impossible face mask thing and yeah. she's just been doing lip, isn't that, that person is just lip syncing. Is it the same person? Yeah, yeah, there you go. If it, if it is, that's Taylor Swift. How would that be like, let's say Taylor Swift decides in the future, she's like, I'm going to allow a company to create a digital presence of me, and then we can use either holograms or robots and face sharing, and then suddenly she can do her tour all at once. all over the world on one day all at once. It's like that's still something people would value to go pay and see, knowing that it's a less I think, less you for think sure. mm. well, it depends like I think in the immediate less, but as time goes on and you get. You know, people are like, I don't know what a real person in a concert experience is actually like. Uh, I'm sure it becomes the norm. Yeah. But, like, part of the reason people love Taylor Swift, right, and they love going to the concert because, like, I'm in the same area as Taylor Swift, right? Right. Or, like, The Weeknd or whoever your favorite artist is. Um, You're like, my favorite artist is not The Weeknd. I was there. I thought he was your My favorite artist is Trent Reznor because he's he's short and it's funny. (laughs) It's funny to you. Hear that, Trent? No, please. That man could kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm legit afraid of that person. It's fair. He's scary. Like it always makes me laugh when you realize Trent Reznor and his partner. Um, they did the music for was it Soul, Soul, Watchmen, oh, so many things. Right, but like the Disney Pixar yeah. stuff. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to imagine he sat down in a room with like these happy individuals at Pixar. And he's all like this dark, moody guy. And <laughs> he's like, I'm going to make music for you guys. <laughs> it's going to be uplifting. <laughs> we all look to give a <laughs> Great music. Great soundtrack. Great movie. It's still weird to me. Anyway, I think it's that time to ask the question. If I remember correctly, we will we will, uh, we'll start with Krishna. So Krishna, was the creator good? Yes, the creator was good. Uh, I thought the film was strengthened by its focus on the existential human condition using AI as the backdrop and setting to answer that uh, that question. Uh, I was moved by the movie, unexpectedly so. Uh, and I'm also usually not a fan of child actors because they're usually just not very good um, and annoying and sort of stick out in movies like sore thumbs. But Madeline Una Voiles, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, was really good, really believable, and uh, I thought was uh, definitely like elevated the movie. She was like a strength. Um, so, uh, yes, the creator was good. Ravi or Juna, was the creator good? I guess we'll he'll go to you. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I've gone back and forth on this one. You know, uh, I did. I do have. Qual- I, I don't think the movie is perfect. I think some of the plotting is a little clumsy. I think there were parts of the movie where I was just kind of waiting to get to the next part. Uh, I thought the. I thought visually. I thought all the things positive we've talked about. I, I definitely agree with, but. I think ultimately I was swayed to say that this movie was good. I did enjoy. A majority of it, um, I think there again, like I said earlier, there is a part of me that wants to celebrate something that is like a bit more original than than what we've gotten. Um, so yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I will see this movie again, um, and I'm excited to. I'm not dreading it. So 
Yes. You dread to see movies again? Sometimes. Eternals. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, if you dread it, why watch it again? Sometimes you have to. Why? Wait, well, like yeah. Fun. Oh, wait, for work? What? For work? You for don't Bob? have to. I yeah, mean, there's spark notes for movies. And and Ravi's not watched Mad Max and done an entire podcast on it. That's because I'm a brilliant actor. <laughs> yeah. He did exactly. really well. It was, it was a third of a pod. And he and and uh, if I remember correctly, there was one part where I was like, Ravi, what's your favorite part? And he's like, gosh, there's so many. Um, What's yours? <laughs> <laughs> So. I need to find that pod. And, uh, uh, did, but yeah. Were we recording video back then? Yeah, that oh. was at Carson. Oh, okay, then yeah, we I think that was our hundredth. Yeah, that was that was where because we yeah that's right that was where we all asked each other what movie or something. I'm gonna find that clip and put it up because it's classic. Ravi, was the creator were good? So as you all know, when we left the theater, I was kind of like, no, it was not good. Yeah, and then like I said, I saw the trailer again, but. I think the real reason I'm going to say my answer is is because I remember leaving theater after Rogue One and it raining and tears falling down my eyes at how chubby Darth Vader looked. Uh, and, and I was like, oh, that movie was not good. <laughs> and, and years later, that movie has obviously aged like a fine wine. And I was wrong. Yeah. So I've decided going forward blindly that any Gareth Edwards film that comes out is good. You should, it's extreme for you. <laughs> it no has to be. I, w- I will say now, this is the third Gareth Edwards movie I've seen between Godzilla, Rogue One, Rogue One. Yep. and this. And he just does the like menacing, large thing really mm. well, yes. right? Godzilla, yeah. the fucking Death Star. The sh- oh, what I'm is- sorry, the fucking Death Star? Yeah, because yeah, it's upside down. You didn't down. see it? How did, it, how did <laughs> Starkiller get around? Yeah. Oh, there you go. And then, um, what's the station in the creator called again? The, the big one? Bob. Nomad. Well, no the, the, oh, group, the group is called Nomad, but the station, they kind of, re- when they refer to Nomad, they refer to that yeah. big thing, but yeah. I mean, uh, but that thing was like the way, Menacing. Yeah. the way he it was shot, it was presented, like. Also the sound effects and music I'm not, I'm not it. saying this facetiously or against yeah. any, but I thought it was like one of the more compelling characters in the movie because it like is yeah. a character. It's, yeah. But the way it's presented is this menacing like character. Right. Which I thought was like, re- I, th- I think he always does a really good job of. Of doing of of doing that, yeah. So. Scale, he's very good at scale. He should, he's great he at. should do Transformers, and he should do Unicron. The other thing, though, about Gareth too that I think is is great is he is a go and look around the planet mm-hmm. to find what I'm looking for. Scouts locations, yeah. Like he started scouting for this back, I think, in 2019, is what I read. And like him and his, I think, wife, they just took a some film camera and they just went all around the world taking pictures and like figuring out where does it make sense to like shoot this thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that adds to the scale because it makes it believable and it makes it feel like real as opposed to shooting it on a volume and every shot is a circular shot. (laughs) Everything has to be round. Well, I, I saw I saw, a, I saw a quote from Stallone recently. I think it was recirculated from a year or two ago, where he was just talking about like how hard he finds it to just act in front of green screen. Yeah, right, and just yeah. like not having anything. He's like, I just he's like, he's like, I'm not saying anything against like those actors. I think it's like very special and unique to be able to do that. But he's like, for me, it's like if I can't see it, like, mm. I don't, how am I supposed to react to? I to think anything to the called scale. imagination. Right. Stallone. Stallone doesn't have imagination, clearly. No. <laughs> but I, you know who does? Have you seen The Expendables? <laughs> you know. No. Who, <laughs> you know who does a good job though with green screen acting is theater actors. Yeah. Because traditionally, on a theater, you have minimal to no props. Right. Sets are very you kind utilize of, your imagination. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's why a lot of times you see theater uh, like actors who start in theater um, or Broadway go onto the big screen. They feel more believable. It's because I think they truly, truly believe it. We had an, a- an acting friend uh, years ago tell us. Michael Lerman? No. F- sorry, Michael. This wasn't you. Um, That's fine. We had an acting friend years ago tell us, like, in order to be, like, a believable actor, you truly have to believe what you are saying or doing. Like, you have to make that your truth in order for, like, like if you don't believe it, nobody watching you is going to believe it. Right. And that... I think that's why theater actors can do a better job against the green screen. Makes a lot of sense because, yeah, like all the things you said, sometimes they can get a little overacty. Yeah, they they have to be big on the stage, sure, and so then sure. they're big on the camera. 
I, I didn't say it was every theater actor. No, you did. You said every theater actor. I did not. Is say as that. good as every Gareth Edwards <laughs> movie. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I, I mean, I'll be curious to see when we get another Gareth Edwards film, though. I think it'll be probably a couple of years, which is fine. That's how it used to be. Yeah. Make a film take some time off. Yeah, like if you had two movies in one year, that was a big deal. Yep. That's like becoming the norm now. But anyway, yeah. that's going to do it for us here on Was It Good. As always, thank you for tuning in and listening. You can find us on the World Wide Web at wasitgood.info. You can find full episodes on youtube.com slash wasitgood, on Twitter at wasitgood, on TikTok and Instagram at was it good pod. We will be back early next week with our podcast on Ahsoka. The whole thing. I don't know if it's a season one. Is it a season? I don't one? know. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know. What we it have. feels like it. There would be more seasons potentially. potentially. We'll see. We'll but see. We'll see. Till next time, Ah, Ahsoka. And we are. Was it good?